I, I am based in New York right now, but I just returned from Israel uh, two weeks ago. Uh, everything changed over the course of, of two weeks, as you can imagine. You know, throughout the entire weekend, uh, Hamas continued to fire missiles towards Israeli territory every time challenging the missile defense system even more. The Iron Dome, the IDF, the Israeli military, just said that in the last 12 hours, over 140 rockets were fired from Gaza. I just read that another Israeli civilian was killed, so the death toll continues to rise. I think that we are talking about 10 casualties so far on Israel's side since the beginning of this round of uh, escalation. As uh, you said, uh, the IDF continues to operate in Gaza, mainly from the air, um, you know, cracking down on Hamas and Islamic Jihad operatives. Thursday night saw a very successful attack for the Israeli military, and we could talk about it a bit deeper later. And uh, there was another interesting development that I think we should mention over the weekend. Friday saw clashes uh, again in, in the West Bank this time on another front uh, between Israeli security forces and uh, Palestinians. And think about it, Carl, this is exactly what Hamas wishes to see. Another challenge to Israel on another front, but also something in the West Bank, as you know, is also undermining the stability of the Palestinian Authority there. Yeah. And if this is not challenging enough, you know, the domestic front has been uh, very, very challenging for Israel's military police and police, because w whenever I talk to Israelis, and I should say Jews and Arabs alike, they describe to me that the uh, riots, the violence in mixed Jewish Arab towns like Acre, like Jaffa, like Lod and Haifa, uh, is something that has been very difficult to deal with and contain. Sometimes it's, it's even scarier to them uh, or more concerning that the the constant threat of the missiles that they are somewhat used to. Right. You know, and, and this is like the first major attack that Joe Biden has really had to deal with uh, on any type of global conflict here. I mean, we, we saw this wind down a little while. There's talk of a ceasefire, but there's always a ceasefire. And then it happens again. And then there's a ceasefire. And then it happens again. I mean, like, what, what, what's going on here? Is there any real possibility of actually putting this to bed? Uh, that's a good question. Well, the long term, of course, uh, we'll, we'll have we'll have to come up with a better solution, you know. But uh, it's it's the vicious cycle of, of violence in the Middle East and specifically in in this region, Israel and the Palestinian uh, territories. But um, you know, regarding the Biden administration, of course, that the U.S. is uh, somewhat involved, as we're hearing from different reports behind the scenes in trying to de-escalate the situation. Also, there has have been some reports that Russia, the European Union, uh, even Egypt, and the UAE. Lead Leader have been somewhat involved in talks behind the scenes. Uh, but as you know, Benjamin Netanyahu told the Israeli public just a few days ago that this operation will take some time and at the end, Israel will regain its deterrence. Um, on the other hand, if we're talking about the Biden administration, I will tell you that they have been very supportive of Israel's right to defend itself by also buying Israel some time and leeway to operate and avoid international criticism by pushing the UN Security Council session to Sunday. So uh, we should wait and see uh, what will come out of this uh, session. But if you're thinking about that, uh, both sides, I will say, the Israeli and also Hamas, uh, have their winning images to present to their public. So, um, but you never know in the Middle East. You know, you you don't need a. Uh, uh, somebody to intend a war for a war to actually erupt. Yeah, no, I, spent, I spent nine years in and out of Iraq, so I, I, oh. I completely get it. Now, th this is something, though, in the past, this is something that always kind of gets me is, you know, Israel has typically been blamed for responding to rocket attacks. They said, you know, oh, they're, they're, they're escalating the situation and things like that. But, you know, this has been going on for generations. It's not like this hadn't happened in the last few years. This is a generational conflict. You know, what started this one this time? Uh, you will get many different answers from many people, but I tend to divide the causes into two different categories. You have the more imminent triggers that everyone was talking about. Everyone was, you know, talking about the uh, home ownership dispute in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood in East Jerusalem, but that is a legal dispute that also a case that has been in front of the Supreme Court for a while, and the court hearing was postponed. And then you had very viral TikTok videos of Palestinian youth uh, punching uh, Jewish Orthodox in Jerusalem. And that is something that has been brewing for a while. It led to protests and counter protests and then clashes. 
in uh, Jerusalem. And of course, you have the, the bigger picture of, you know, the uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian president, postponing or rather canceling, I think we should call it this way, the Palestinian elections. And uh, you have Hamas that has to, uh, you know, uh, regain its deterrence as this uh, powerful force that is also actively militarily acting against Israel, especially, um, you know, they were they were uh, humiliated by the UAE and, and, and Bahrain normalizing their ties with, with Israel and also by the arrangements that they had with the Trump administration uh, through Egypt and the money coming in from Qatar. So somewhat Hamas, you know, has gone low key uh, for several years. And now they have to show that the, they are this powerful force once again. Yeah. And uh, and you have instability, we should say, also on Israel's side, right. uh, which is something that Israel's enemies want to, you know, take advantage of. And sure. going back just uh, to complete uh, the, you know, the, the bigger picture to the Biden administration, you have a new administration in the White House that is reversing Trump-era right. policies in the region that worked in favor of Israel in what is emboldening now Israel's enemies. I mean, it's, it's, it's a shocking web of, of complicated things. Tal Heinrich, appreciate you joining us very much. Thank you. Thank you.